So when a real estate transaction is canceled, usually the good faith deposit or the earnest money deposit goes back to the buyer. Well, what if there's not so much clarity as to who gets the earnest money deposit? Well, today we're gonna to be talking about interpleader action and what that entails for you as a buyer or seller and how we go about resolving it. So make sure to like and subscribe. Your support means a lot. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about today is something that rarely happens, but it certainly can. And let's go ahead and set the stage real quick for it. And that is the earnest money deposit. So generally when a buyer goes to make a purchase uh, and they submit the uh, purchase agreement, they will include in their offer a earnest money deposit. Now generally this is between one and 3%, which can be pretty significant. So for example, if you're looking at a million dollar house, uh, that can be up to $30,000. Uh, generally, it's gonna be you know, between 10 to 20,000, however. But still, that's a significant amount. Now, generally, that's there to show the seller that you really do have skin in the game, and it makes your, strong, your offer a bit stronger if you are a buyer. So that's one thing to uh, increase your strength of your offer. Now, generally, that, got, that does get returned to you almost all the time. I've never had a situation where uh, that's up for uh, question. However, in certain circumstances, um, the uh, earnest money deposit could potentially not go to the buyer. There can be some, um, some options or some opportunity for um, uh, translation in the contract as far as who, the, uh, who gets the money. When that happens, something called an interpleader action occurs. But before we talk about that, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if the parties do agree. And we'll go ahead and take a look here on the screen, the cancellation of the contract and the opportunity to release some funds. So release of deposit and cancellation of escrow. You'll see here that the there are four options basically. Seller authorizes release of buyer's deposit. That's pretty typical. Buyer authorizes release of buyer's deposit, less seller's fees and costs to the seller. Both buyer seller acknowledge mutual cancellation of the agreement, but nevertheless authorize escrow holder to continue to hold the deposit until receiving subsequent mutual instructions, judicial decision or arbitration award, or D, other. So in the case of C, if the two parties don't agree and there is a hold on it and we need to bring it to the court, what happens in that case is the escrow company will file what we call an interpleader action. And what they will do is they'll bring the case forward to uh, the courtroom and the judge can determine. Now the reason for that is it helps release the liability that they have. For example, if a buyer says, hey, I'd like to re uh, you to release the, buyer, the earnest money uh, deposit to me, and let's say, for example, the, um, the escrow company cannot reach the seller to determine that that is in fact the way it's supposed to go, and they release the earnest money deposit to the buyer, well, that could potentially open up the seller to sue them. Now, vice versa, if the uh, seller requests the earnest money deposit for whatever grounds that they have, and escrow gives it to them, the buyer can sue them based on whatever grounds they have. So you can get uh, lawsuits going towards the escrow company, which should be a neutral third party in the real estate transaction. So what they do is they file an interpleader action and bring it to the court and the court determines who gets the money. First, let's go ahead and start with definitions here. Interpleader action. Section 386 is what allows for the interpleader action as we can see here. Any person, firm, corporation, or association, or other entity against whom double or multiple claims are made may or may be made by two or more persons which are such that they may give rise to double or multiple liability may bring an action against the claimants to compel them to interplead and litigate their several claims. So that just, uh, pretty much uh, clearly communicates what's going on. So when escrow, like I said, uh, has two different uh, claimants over the earnest money deposit, the collateral, then they bring it to the courtroom. So interpleader action, there you go. A little bit about it, a little bit about real estate law and how disputes are uh, dealt with and uh, how escrow will take care of uh, things and how they will re um, reduce some of their liability. 
What can you do to make sure that this doesn't happen as a buyer or seller? We'll make sure that your contract is very clear. Um, if you do have an attorney and it's a more complicated transaction, I would suggest uh, them looking it over in addition to your broker that's helping you uh, with the transaction. It's always important to have the documentation and anything in writing so that it's uh, very clear and you can present your case to the courtroom and communicate why you should or shouldn't have or the other party should not have uh, the earnest money deposit or that initial deposit. And like I said before, that can actually come into play. There can be a lot of money at stake. So you definitely do not want to get in a situation where you also pay for the uh, potentially the um, attorney fees and also you, lo you lose out and you don't get that earnest money deposit. So there you go, interpleader action. That's what happens when two claimants, typically the buyer or seller, can uh, have two claims on the earnest money deposit and the escrow company brings that to the courtroom because they don't want to have liability and have the buyer or seller, whatever the claimants are, sue them. Hope you all have a great day. Hope, you, hope that brought some inf good information, good education to you. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, if you can, make sure to hit that notification bell icon so that you're notified with new videos all the time. Hope you all have a great day. Talk to you later.